Hi, I'm Storm, and I am today going to provide a summary of a research project that several students and I undertook in 2021. Our aim with the project was to provide a free music business education program for local musicians. And I'm going to give you an overview today of what we did and what we found. First of all, a little background as to how we developed the project and where the idea came from. We all know that universities are always striving to be more involved in their local communities. I know at our own university we have a student-run record label that works with local artists. We have uh, students working in all sorts of experiential learning uh, engagements in the community. And when I personally got involved with the music scene in Denver, I became part of the Denver Music Advisory Board many years ago. And at one point, we put on a program called the Denver Music Summit, in which we brought together business and, and business and leaders and entrepreneurs in the music business here locally, as well as musicians in the community. I myself provided a four-hour seminar on the music business. And as we all know, it's hard to cover the entirety of music business and everything you need to know in four hours. I felt cut short at that time and longed to provide a, a deeper dive, uh, if you will, into the music business concepts that I think a musician needs to know. Um, and I always hoped for that. I taught, and I still teach, a class called Music Cities. And as part of um, any discussion of music cities and the increased emphasis by cities on their music economy, the term professional development comes up a lot in, 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 as a way to support the local musicians in a community. So the, the, that concept surely figured into my thinking on this project. And then there is also the idea that musicians need to be, in an in a ideal music ecosystem, need to be educated as far as leadership opportunities as well. There are many times that policies within a community uh, and, and various advocacy positions need to be taken by, uh, by musicians to uh, fight for their own rights, uh, if you will. And um, so though all of this um, sort of coalesced in my idea that especially during the COVID crisis and the downtime that musicians were experiencing, many of them, uh, it would be a great opportunity to provide a deeper um, and more rich overview of the music business to our local musicians, many of which um, won't have the time uh, or the resources to attend a college class. With that in mind, I noticed that a President's Initiative grant here at CU Denver was coming available. The full title there is, is, is pretty lengthy, but President's Initiative Grant for Urban and Place-Based Research and Creative Work. I saw the opportunity to apply for that grant to support a, a free music business program for community musicians and, um, and to involve the students who I could pay with the funding from that grant uh, to build and lead such a program. I myself would take on the role of developing the program and the proposal as well as the strategy and um, and provide any leadership and 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 play and play as an advisor to the project as well. So fortunately, we did secure the grant, and um, I was happy for that. And I set about our objective as being well twofold, really. First of all, we wanted to see if such a program could advance the creative work and, and provide local musicians with an opportunity to thrive as artists as well as community leaders. I also saw a great opportunity to help the students and surely the pedagogical part of this this project uh, was important to me and I wanted to help increase the students engagement in the community and uh, I wanted to give them an opportunity to to learn to be an educator by, by teaching these, uh, these sessions that we would have for musicians. I wanted them to practice organizing such a, such a project. And of, of course, there was a research element that would surely be a great experience for the students. So with those 
aims in mind. I did um, enlist the help of nine students in, in undertaking this project at the beginning of 2021. Um, you can see that the students come from various areas in the College of Arts and Media here at CU Denver including the film and television area because I enlisted students who could document the project and document the course uh, or the classes and everything that we did so that hopefully this program could be developed as something other universities or, or other institutions could, could implement. We enlisted help from our community leaders, and, and um, that, that help would come in the form of either helping us get the word out about the program uh, and distributing the application, which I'll get to later, or we could have a guest speaker from these organizations, or they simply would um, provide support in, in uh, furthering the, the program once we got it off the ground. The process that we set about at started with the application development. That is, what, what sort of process could we use to let folks apply to the program so that we can review those applications and make sure that we're helping the musicians who need the assistance most. And we also uh, again, this was an exercise for the students. It would also help in, our, in, in understanding our data uh, further down the line. So the students and I developed an application and uh, reviewed that and got it circulated throughout the community. And uh, while we were accepting applications, uh, we uh, knew that we, though, though we were going to conduct the classes on Zoom, which would make it possible to, of course, have any number of of participants, we still wanted to limit the amount of participants for this first phase of the project or this pilot program uh, so that we make sure we can give the proper attention to uh, a smaller group. So we started with a limit of 50 participants for this first pilot project. So the students uh, reviewed the applications and were involved in the selection process as well. Simultaneous to that, we developed the curriculum that we could offer. We decided on an eight-week program, one day a week for two hours, and that day would be Saturday afternoon specifically. And so we decided what we wanted to cover in those 16 hours that we had and who would teach each part of that, etc. Our logistical and programming plan included, again, earlier, uh, I just mentioned that, that the two-hour classes would have to be organized so that we get, make the most of that two hours. Knowing that we couldn't really, quote-unquote, lecture for two hours, we put together a, a I guess, a, a, a plan to have a student present on the topic for the first 40 minutes, have some Q&A time, take a break, then come back and have an open Q&A uh, again, and then we'd have a guest speaker for part of that second hour, and then we'd have a 10-minute wrap-up toward the end. We also decided, because on the applications we saw a lot of people setting as a goal for the program a, the networking opportunity as a priority, we also, at the end of each program uh, each week, set aside time afterward, we called it extra innings, to network, literally just all talk about what we had going on, uh, new releases, uh, upcoming gigs, etc. We, of course, wanted to archive and, and distribute the content that we had, or, or distribute to the participants for review. And so uh, the fact that we were forced to use Zoom uh, during the early part of 2021 made that part of it easy. It was simply a matter of recording the sessions, and then we would put them in a canvas shell uh, as, as an LMS that the, that the participants could go to to review anything we covered, or if they missed a session, they could, they could go and find that content uh, and catch up, so to speak. 
So we were doing that along the way, but we were also collecting data each week and reviewing it. We collected uh, uh, quantitative data in the form of a survey. At the end of each session, we asked what they got out of the session, what we could have done better in the session, and we also asked them or, or informed them what next, next week's topic would be and gave them an opportunity to tell us what, we, what they wanted us to be sure to cover for that topic uh, upcoming. And that survey data, of course, gave us uh, points, of, uh, points of context to see how we were doing in our presentations as well along the way. So we conducted a post-mortem looking at that data, too, to make sure that we kept improving each session uh, in terms of our delivery. Finally, and this happened mostly after the program was over, uh, we were documenting along the way, um, and and uh, the film students in particular were catching moments recorded where we could put together a sizzle reel uh, and uh, any other um, assets that we could use to to uh, market and document the responses of the participants. They were literally interviewed one on one. In, in several cases and asked for their feedback. And the students, once the program was done, the students uh, were filmed in interview sessions so where they could provide qualitative feedback to us as to what their takeaways and um, what growth w were and what growth they experienced from it. So we did, again, an eight-week session the first time, and when we put out the applications, and I would, I would be honest in saying we didn't probably get those applications as widespread as we would have liked, we had 138 applicants, and we were limiting this first pilot session, uh, series of sessions to 50 participants, as I mentioned earlier, but we we just didn't want to turn away the other 88 people who we couldn't accept. So we actually, about halfway through the first pilot project, decided to do a second session uh, or a second series of sections in the fall of 2021. Um, so that meant that we had 50 in the first eight-week session, and then we had 25 in the second or the fall 2021 uh, series of sessions. So that amounted to 14 two-hour plus sessions, and I say plus again because we would stay afterward. And if you think of it in terms of the number of participants each week, yes, we were pedagogically responsible uh, attendee takers, attendance takers during these sessions. And, and um, uh, with we had actually pretty good attendance for something that was free with no commitment. It, it amounted to 576 hours of what we called musician learning hours, where these musicians um, uh, participated. So we had quantitative and qualitative data collected along the way and afterward uh, with this project. And uh, I could certainly do a deeper dive into what we what we uh, learned, but I'll highlight some of the major findings and takeaways that we had. First of all, on a scale of one to five, our average rating uh, for each of the sessions was 4.61. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but the students divvied up which session they would teach. So it could vary from week to week who the instructor, uh, who the student instructor was. And um, we were certainly uh, consistent, I think I could say um, uh, accurately, uh, among the, 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 the students, instructors. Uh, they did a bang-up job. And um, I, I understand that many people, when it's a free program, are probably going to lean more towards positive feedback. Um, and, and, but... Uh, still, we were we were happy with a 4.61 average rating for each of the sessions, and that was a rating not just of the instructors, but
but of the content and how helpful the materials were, as well as how helpful the guest speakers were, and how the you know how the how the session flowed as well. So there's a there's a lot of num a lot of lot of factors that went into that that overall rating. We learned. I don't. I wouldn't say it was an unexpected outcome, but uh, many of the musician participants ended up collaborating either during the eight weeks or the six weeks or afterward. It's it's been really refreshing to see that many uh, contacts were made where perhaps a singer enlisted a bass player that was in the uh, in their session. Um, and, and so we were proud to see those collaborations happen as a result of the networking provided by the, by the, by the program. Our delivery mechanism, as I mentioned earlier, had to be Zoom because of the pandemic. But really what we feel like after doing this twice is that Zoom is a, probably a, a better way to conduct the program in many respects because on a college campus, of course, anybody who came to campus would have to pay for parking. There would be transportation, and there would be things like that to deal with. Um, and even if we were to have different locations around the city, there's transportation. Uh, there's other things that made Zoom probably um, a, a helpful tool to use for this, this sort of program. However, uh, the students and I feel like afterwards, we'd still want to get the, if we were to do this again, we'd want to bring together the participants at least once or twice in person. Um, absolutely. And, and if, if even some of the sessions could be uh, in person. So our feeling is that a mix of online and um, face-to-face delivery would be best. We, uh, we didn't intend for the program to be a a use a CU Denver showcase in the in the sense that we weren't intending to recruit uh, the participants into our program. In fact, as we looked at applications, we looked for people who uh, apparently wouldn't have the opportunity, be it they wouldn't have the time or the resources to attend a full college program. So we in no ways, and, and, and we were very subtle in our mentions of CU Denver, and there was no logo uh, or anything uh, referring to the university. So uh, we weren't, we, I guess, we weren't on a marketing and recruitment um, um, uh objective for this program. However, we did have at least one student that I know of uh, uh, in, our, in, our, in our college now who participated in the program and liked what they heard and I guess saw the students at work and wanted to, um, to take it a step further and they did actually start going to our university. But again, recruitment was not our aim. It was certainly good for public relations. As I just said, we weren't, we weren't up front with the CU Denver marketing assets, but um, many people you know, uh, who helped us get the word out would mention that these were CU Denver students who were putting this program on. And uh, you know, naturally, our name got attached to it, and I feel like it made for good public relations. We did get some press about the program. And uh, so there was certainly that that benefit, uh, but uh, I, I one of my particular takeaways um, uh, from it that that uh, I was glad to see was that the students uh, really got. Uh, I could go on and on about the uh, the value that they saw in participating in this program. Uh, I would tell you that one thing they told me is they they gained a lot of confidence in teaching material that they learned in class. They thought they knew the material, but when they stood up or, or, or figuratively speaking stood up and had to present it to a to a group of strangers, um, uh, they they gained confidence in their grasp of the material, and uh, of course all the confidence they gained from from presenting uh, and public speaking. That, that can come. So um, that's a summary of, of what we did with this project. Uh, I'm glad to answer any questions. 
Um, and I can be reached at this email address, and I thank you for your time.